Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is the concluding lecture of the course on convex optimization. The course on convex optimization is really not complete an undergraduate course in the true sense of the term. It has a mix of graduate and undergraduate flavor, uh, both uh, having a bit of algorithmic flavor in some sense for a very particular class of problems and also having a good amount of theoretical flavor. Now, uh, today's lecture usually the in the last concluding lecture people summarize what they have done in this course and uh, how could you use this course for your other activities. So, but uh, I, I thought that I would be giving you some sort of an entertainment lecture by telling you some interesting snippets about convex optimization and uh, telling you some details about things. So, I will let, let me just say today's lecture is an entertainment lecture. So, you relax, forget your notebooks, just listen to what I am saying. We will really look into two aspects KKT conditions and we will revisit them. And number two, the use of strong convexity now uh, this revisiting of KKD conditions will do first and will take the least time. This was uh, due to a work of John B. Lazare, which was published in the journal called Optimization Letters. In January of January issue of two zero one zero. This uh, goes under the title called representations of the feasible region in convex optimization. See in general what is the meaning of a convex optimization problem. So, we come back make a full circle and come back and ask the question what is a convex optimization problem. This problem simply means you want to minimize a convex function x f over or more succinctly like this, where f is a convex function. and C is a convex set. Now, in general we have always assumed in this course that this set C in most cases is described by the set of all x's for which g i x is less than equal to 0 for every i from 1 to m and each of these g i's are convex functions. If C is described in such a way, then this, this convex optimization problem is usually called a convex programming problem. That is why the C p sign is used in most cases, it is called convex programming. But 
usually it means minimization of a convex function over a convex set. Now, the question is to represent a convex function set in terms of inequality constraints, does it mean that I always have to consider functions each of these functions to be convex. That need not be the case, because if you take the set C, C not 2 such that So, if this is my feasible region, then this feasible region depicts the following convex set. Now, if I consider this function g 1 x, this is not a convex function, but though so, there are other functions which are convex, but this is not a convex function. So, I can write this as minus x 1 less than 0 minus x 2 less than 0, which would be convex function, but g 1 x is not a convex function, but the set C ultimately is convex. So, here what is happening is a representation in the representation of the set C, I am forced to take in a non convex function, at least one of the functions is non convex. So, it is really not a convex programming problem in the sense of terminology, but it is a convex optimization problem. So, what we do is the following that uh, the question we ask is for the following. In this case, is k k t conditions necessary and sufficient so if that is the question what constraint qualifications are needed for this to take place is slater condition enough? The answer is no, the slater condition is not enough. So, apart from the slater condition, so we will need two conditions for this to happen. And number two, following we will assume that all these constraints are differentiable, the g i's are differentiable. for all x in C with So, for every a point in the boundary this vector is non 0 that is the idea. You see now we are considering the condition case where C is given in terms of inequality constraints that is C is written in terms of and this all of them need not be convex. So, sometimes we if I just list down the constraints if there is a non convex constraint we consider it as a non convex programming problem or non convex optimization problem without realizing there is a hidden convexity because the ultimate feasible set C that that is a convex set. So, for such problems if these two conditions are satisfied then Lazer proved that k k t conditions. So, this condition is called a non degeneracy condition. Oh, GI. the k k t conditions are both necessary in this situation. So, even if all the elements of the set a the represent functions representing the set C is not convex still we can write down uh, we can show that the k k t conditions 
under these two conditions, these two assumptions, this is called a non degeneracy condition. We will not go into too much detail because it is just snippets. The non degeneracy condition. So, Lave proved that KKD conditions are both necessary and sufficient. So, this is one interesting aspect that even if your representation is not given all by convex functions, you can still have a necessary KKD conditions to be necessary and sufficient provided that not only Slater condition holds, but something else additionally also holds. It has also been recently uh, brought to the non, non differentiable situation by a colleague of myself and me and with the colleague. So, let us forget that part and let us go into a more interesting part, which is more interesting from an algorithmic point of view and uh, that is what we will now study strongly convex functions in and optimization, how strongly convex functions affect optimization. So, if you have a function from R n to R n, a strongly convex function is one whose Hessian matrix has always got to be positive semi definite sorry positive not positive semi definite positive definite. So, for any x y if the function is differentiable then this is the definition of So, for all x y in R n this is what will happen try it out with x square where mu is greater than 0 is called the modulus of strong convexity. Just for simplicity we will put mu equal to m by 2 just because we need to differentiate this part also very soon. So, once I do that this expression would now be where m is of course, some quantity bigger than 0. No, m is nothing but twice of mu that is nothing else. So, now this function is square shape. A thing which you have already heard before in the sense that limit of f x is equal to plus infinity if the norm of x is going to plus infinity. Hence, there exists x star in R n which is unique such that f of x star is equal to p star is equal to the infimum value of f over R n. So, whenever the function is coercive there would always exist a unique minimizer the uniqueness comes from the function being strongly convex strongly convex function is a subclass of strictly convex function. So, uh, so strongly convex functions are 
those subclass of strictly convex function for which the Hessian matrix at every x is always positive definite. For quadratic problems strictly and strongly convex classes coincide. Now we are first, so our question is the following which makes very good sense from the point of view of computation. Of course, if you, you want to compute grad f x and possibly put that equal to 0 and get the answer if you want to solve it. But here if you, you would observe very soon that it is in order to solve this problem we really again have to go back and apply standard algorithms just doing grad f x equal to 0 might not, but grad f x equal to 0 will not only give an approximate answer. So, given any x, so the natural question is given any x in C, so one of which could be your approximate answer, given any x in C, any, any uh, sorry given any x in R n not C, can you estimate, the question is can you estimate this distance that is the question that is absolutely relevant question from the algorithmic point of view because if you are stopping you do not know the exact x star you are stopping at algorithm your algorithm and taking that x k as your solution how good is your approximation that is a very important thing from a numerical point of view and so getting an upper bound on this is a very very important issue and that is what is the subject of error bound which is a very exciting area of research in convex optimization is all about. So, let us take a careful look as to how we can do it. We will be our first step we will claim that P star We will prove this for the given x, this is p star is always bounded below by this number. For any x, this is always true. So, how do I do it? Now, for a fixed x, once I fix the x for any other y, let us look at the left hand side of the sorry, right hand side of the expression for strongly convex function. Now, of course, we have started in our definition of strongly convex function, we have started with the case where f is differentiable. If I am not getting into the issue of when f is not differentiable. So, you see a strongly convex function is always convex because this is greater than equal to 0. So, again this whole thing is bigger than this whole thing, but a convex function need not be strongly convex. So, example f x equal to x square is strongly convex f x equal to x not strongly convex f x equal to x to the power 4 x is in R of course, in this particular cases my x is in R. So, x to the power 4 is strictly convex, but not strongly convex. So, here you see the differences. Now, look at this part. This can be viewed as a function of y for a fixed x putting the reference as x. I am viewing this part as a function of y. So, f of y for a fixed x this is true and this would immediately imply infimum of f y over r n 
is infimum of phi x y over R n. Now, this is a convex problem, but this is anyway convex in y, it is clear, but this is affine in y, this part and this is strongly convex in y. So, this is a strongly convex function in y. So, this is what you will have, and this is nothing but p star, which we have already seen. So, p star is bigger than inf of R n phi x y. So, our job now would be to find this infimum. So, how what I would do is to optimize the function phi x y by taking the gradient with respect to y, right. And so, if y tilde is the mean and there will be a mean because this function is strongly convex, there will be a mean just in the same sense, there will be a minimum of this function let y bar be that minimum uh, minimize or rather then phi y tilde is 0. So, this would imply immediately you take the gradient see now the 2 goes off it makes the calculation look more easy. So, this would simply tell me that y tilde is equal to x minus 1 by m grad f x. So, how do I do it? Now, observe that f of y bigger than of course, this is the infimum. So, any f of y would be bigger than this uh, rather I would say sorry I make a, make a mistake I have already written p star. So, p star is bigger than the minimum value of this which is f of x y tilde minus x plus m by 2 y tilde minus x whole square. If I put down the value of y tilde here, so I will have this bigger than f x plus grad f x what is this y tilde is x minus. So, x x will get cancelled. So, you will have a minus 1 by m grad f x plus m by 2 y tilde minus x is nothing but same as. So, I will have 1 by m square So, this would give me f x plus here I will from here I will have 1 by 2 m and here I will have minus 1 by m So, this would give me p star to be greater than f x minus 1 by 2 m. So, you see uh, that that is exactly what we had uh, discussed uh, that what is we are what is what what we want to do. So, so this is providing a lower bound on the optimal value. So, given any x star I can provide you a lower bound on the optimal value, but that need to be the infimum, infimum is p star, these are all lower bound, the infimum of the function is p star, lower bound on the optimal value. So, give me any x star, I can give you immediately a rough idea of the, so the beauty of strong convexity is that give me any f and give me any x, I will tell you here m if I put as a 2 mu, it will become 4 mu basically, this is p star is greater than f x minus 1 by 4 mu into no norm of f x square. You will simply see that this this thing, see here I have used the fact that uh, this inner product this is same is nothing but norm f x square, norm grad f x square. So, give me any x then I can provide you a lower bound to p star that p star will never go below this value. Hmm. p star might be much above this value, but it will never go below this value. 
we will soon be surprised to see that this fact would be used to really figure out how far and given x is from the original x star which we will might not even know we might not be able to figure out. So, p star, but f x star is p star that is what we know. But p star is greater than by very definition f of x plus grad f x x star minus x plus m by 2 norm x minus x star whole square. Now, here I will apply the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, the Cauchy Schwartz inequality says the following. So, this would imply this is the Cauchy Schwartz by Cauchy Schwartz inequality. this is what you get from the Cauchy Schwartz inequality and so uh, here you can apply this fact and write norm x star minus x but p star is the infimum so f x is bigger than equal to p star which would imply p star minus f x would be less than equal to 0. Now, from here I will get p star minus f x is less than equal to is greater than equal to minus grad f x norm x star minus x plus m by 2 norm x minus x star whole square. Now, what do you get from here? You get the following. Now, this is this is what I know to know to be less than 0. So, that would immediately imply that m by 2 norm x minus x star square is less than equal to So, because x star is not equal to x then the things are obvious x star is not equal to x this is not equal to 0 this norm. So, we can cancel out to write norm x minus x star is less than equal to 2 by m into grad f x norm grad f x now m is equal to twice of mu. So, this would be nothing but 1 by mu times norm grad f x. So, my error bound condition for this, this is called error bound sorry 1 by mu ok. Now, my question is the following. Can I, uh, what, what does this say that okay, if you give me an x, if I compute the grad f x, the grad f x, norm of grad f x is giving me a measure of how near x is from x star. So, suppose I have a sequence x k going to x star. Now, on this sequence, because grad f x k is a continuous function because if n f is continuous grad f is also continuous any convex function is not only differentiable once it is differentiable it is continuously differentiable. 
but x star being the solution and it is unconstrained case it will be 0. So, which means that norm of grad f x k again by continuity of norm goes to 0, which means that for k sufficiently large is indeed small. So, which means that if you are actually on a sequence of points which is going to the infimum, my error bound is actually telling me how close I am coming. So, this norm grad f x if I write down this as a function phi x. measure for the nearness of a approximate solution, measure for the nearness of an approximate solution of a strongly convex function from the original one. From the original unique solution, from the original unique minimizer. unique of course. Now, this thing has a property number 1 phi of x is naturally greater than 0 for all x in R n, this is obvious this is known. Number 2 when phi x is equal to 0, this would imply norm grad of say phi of x bar is equal to 0. So, it will be norm grad of x it will imply grad f of x bar equal to 0 and since f is convex it will imply that x bar is a solution. So, it would also if x bar is the solution on the other hand if x bar is a solution on the other hand then you always have grad of this is equal to 0 and this would immediately imply that norm of grad of f of x bar is equal to 0 and that would imply that phi of x bar is equal to 0. So, what are the properties that we have actually got? So, for phi we have got the property that phi of x is greater than equal to 0 for all x in R n as well as you have the property that phi of x bar is equal to 0 if and only if x bar is a solution of C p with f strongly convex or solution of or x bar is the minimum or minimizer of f over R n. Obviously, f is strongly convex, it is the minimizer. is a minimizer of f over r n. Such type of functions at least for this in this particular setting if you if you can find a function like this which measures actually the distances from the original solution is called a merit function or a gap function. The important question with which we will end our talk is the following. What happens if f is strongly convex, but we now minimize it over a closed convex set C. Note that now in in this case can 
phi be a merit function, phi in the sense is phi is phi x equal to grad f x basically phi x equal to grad f x be a merit function, be a merit function. The answer is no, there is a difficulty, because if you say that phi x bar is equal to 0, this would imply which would imply which would imply that x bar is the unconstrained minima and not the minima on C. For example, if you take the function just f x equal to x square and define your phi x in this case would be the absolute value of sorry f, f dash of x or the grad f x. So, f dash of x is equal to 0 would imply the absolute value means f dash x is equal to 0 which would imply x is equal to 0, but x is unconstrained minimizer. So, if we minimize f x equal to x square over c is equal to 1 2, then phi equal to phi x equal to mod f x, then phi x is equal to absolute value of f dash x does not work. Does not work. because here the minimizer is that obtained at 1 x equal to 0 is not the minimizer over because x equal to 0 is not even feasible. So, how do I define merit functions for the so, interesting question now would be how to define merit functions for the case when c is not equal to r n. I would stop on my talk here, because if I continue it would really go on for at least one half hour more, because there is a lot of things a lot of beautiful things come in when you try to answer this question. So, you try to create a merit function which will work and then there are a lot of issues about that merit function which leads to another improved version of the merit function which really works in practice. So, we will not get into this, so we will end our talk with a hope that some of you will try to figure out this particular so called simple looking question. Thank you very much.